our ongoing series with regard to the Great New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame and the All-State Sugar Bowl sponsoring it. Tonight we get to the Hall of Fame portion of the honorees, and there's a whole bunch of really qualified good people that are going into the Great New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame this year. But certainly at the top of the list is the gentleman who joins me now, and I was joking with him because here we are, it's like two-year span or so, or three-year span, uh, or even four going back to 2019. That's that's three, right? I can't count. Saints Hall of Fame, followed by the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, now the Great New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame, sponsored by the All-State Sugar Bowl. He'll be formally inducted on July the 30th at an event in Caesars Superdome. It's great to welcome the quiet storm, Marcus Colston, to the show. Marcus, again, welcome, and listen, congratulations once again, my friend. I really appreciate you, Ken. It's always always great to catch up with you. Well, listen, I mean, there's so much that we've talked about and so much to reminisce about and the great successes of the New Orleans Saints, but th this is the third significant one that we've talked about and, and having you inducted into in the last three years. And I guess it, as time goes on, you appreciate it more, and it really begins to set in about the magnitude of what happened when you were on the field, right? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's not a lot of time while while you're in it to 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 kind of think about um, you know how things are how things are going to play out. Um, you know, I spent my ten years there just really laser focused on on trying to trying to show up and you know produce and, and help us win games. But uh, like you mentioned, the more removed I get from the game, um, I guess this is my this will be my seventh year out. Um, you just start to look back on, on, you know, these types of honors and these types of awards. And, um, you know, it's always something that it, none of these will ever be lost on me just because I'll always understand how I came in to the team and, and how I got to New Orleans. And, um, you know, just that, that time there was just so special. And, and just to be able to, to reflect on, on that time and those teammates, those wins, um, you know, just the relationships with the fans and, you know, it's just uh, the, the the more time I spend away, the the, the more valuable and, and um, you know th those reflections just become more and more uh, more and more important to me. Well, you of course still live in the Northeast, but you've been involved here and you stay in touch in New Orleans all the time. You even got involved with the University of New Orleans, and this is, if not home, it's a second home to you, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, man. It's it's a place that will always be a second home. Uh, you mentioned the, the the work at UNO and and working with you know a couple organizations like Son of a Saint and uh, the Corporate Leadership and in, uh, Internship Institute. It, it, it's um it's just a place that that welcomed me with open arms. And you know, for for a twenty three year old kid that that had never been to the South before, I got to New Orleans. Um, the reception that that I received, the the, the love that I received. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to be a special place for me, always going to hold a, a special place in my heart. And, you know, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm really excited now just to be able to get back down there more and more often and, and, you know, get integrated back into the community and, and, and the business community. Um, so it's always going to be a place that's, that, you know, I'm always going to have roots there and, um, you know, you just always appreciate the, the, the love and, and the respect that that's there. You never could have imagined in 2006 how this would have worked out here you were uh, hoping probably to become a free agent and you get picked late in the seventh round okay i gotta go to this town that just got destroyed basically and and the football team won three games and they just changed coaches and they, they're hiring some dude that hadn't been a head coach before man this stuff didn't look so good on paper but as it turned out you couldn't have been in a better place right no you, you hit the nail on the head i mean just just um that experience and, and kind of growing up in that experience and, um, you know, being around Sean as a first time coach and Drew is, as somebody who's just coming back from a, a serious injury and, you know, just that team, the way that team was put together and the way the culture was built, um, you know, we had no idea that, that it would end up the way that it ended up. But I, I think we all felt and knew that we were building something special and, you know, just to see that foundation still there uh, means a lot just because, you know, there's a lot of a lot of effort from from a lot of different people that went into kind of reshaping that organization. And, you know, just to be a small part of it, man, it, it, it's, it's always going to be meaningful to me. NFC championship game in your first year. That's that's kind of mind boggling for what had happened here. And 
three winds and the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. Uh, to get to that point, I don't know that there was a better coaching job done, a better job done by players than I saw that year. That was truly remarkable to get that far that quickly. Yeah, I think uh, you you rewind back to the very beginning of that season, man, and, and you spend six weeks at Millsaps College in training camp. Um, you activate a survival mode that, that I think carried us throughout that whole 2006 season. So, you know, if you look back on, on that year, um, I, I think every, every person on that team to a man would say we, we weren't necessarily the most talented team, um, but we won a lot of games because we had a lot of grit. We had we had a lot of fight in us. And I think just, just that starting point, that training camp at Millsaps, I think really set the tone not only for that season, but for the culture that we were building, the type of people, the type of players, um, you know, that the New Orleans Saints would ultimately, uh, you know, become known for for the last, you know, 15 years. I was at Millsaps and it was really hot. I remember very well. I mean, it was it was hot and it was Spartan-like conditions, but I'm not too sure Sean mind, minded that very much, frankly, at that particular point in time and trying to change the culture. And he really did that. And I've always said that to be a champion or to be an exceptional team, you've got to be good and you've got to be lucky. And I think that happened on both fronts. I don't think anybody knew what Marcus Colston would be, maybe other than Marcus Colston at that time. And, of course, nobody knew what Drew Brees would be given the serious injury he was coming off of and the fact that there was a small market for him, only Miami and New Orleans, and he came here. So uh, the surgeon did a great job there on him and obviously <laughs> turned out to be incredible. And and the Saints did a great job by making sure they picked Marcus Colston because <laughs> had he gotten to the free agent market, my guess is he's not ending up in New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, it, when, when you think about it that way, um, I always look back, man, the, the, about the surest thing that we had coming in 06 was, was the fact that Reggie was going to be there. Reggie Bush was like the only sure bet that we had in the whole organization at that point. Um, but no, it's, 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 uh, it's interesting when you look back on it, man. It, it's, you know, I was picked number 252, but, you know, 251 or 253 and my, my life, my career could be completely different. Right. And I think I think every every player, every coach, you know, has that thought process at, at some point. And, you know, I, I think at, at, at some stage you, you, you look at it and, and you accept the fate for what it is. And I was placed in the right place at the right time. And, you know, for me, it was just a matter of show up and, and you know, compete every day and, and just show up and, and be the best version of yourself every day. And that was really my mentality for 10 years. And, you know, Coming, coming into the league that way, um, you know, these awards and the, this type of recognition was, was the furthest thing from my mind. Um, because really and truly, I was, I was just trying to show up and compete every day and, and make sure that I had a job the next day. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really special just to, to kind of be able to zoom out and, and look back on that 10 year, that 10 year period, you know, with a different lens and, and really just be able to enjoy the experience now take you back to that first year I remember the game in Cleveland you guys win 1914 Drew connects with you on that touchdown pass who knew that that would be the first of 72 what's truly remarkable is that you look at the history of the NFL and Brees and Colston are sixth all time in touchdown passes I mean that's that that's got to be a, a bit amazing even to you and and something to be very proud of no, no doubt about it, man. Like, I, I've been watching this game since I was four years old. And, you know, I, I, I would consider myself somebody that, that you know, I'm, I'm a historian of the game. I, I know I know a lot about the game, the way the game is played, and I know how meaningful those numbers are. And, again, I'm, I'm at a point in my life now where I can look back on it and, and see it in, in hindsight. But at the time, it was like, all right, I got one. We won the game. Can, can I get another one to help us win another game? And, you know, at the time, it was just, you know, put one foot in front of the other because, again, I I truly never got to a place in my career where I felt like my job was secure. Um, but, again, not, now having the opportunity to look back on it and, and understanding the game and understanding the history of the game um, and knowing how meaningful those numbers are, man, it is, um, it is man. It's, it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of. And i think more proud of, of the numbers themselves i'm i'm, I'm really proud of the, of the of the way that those numbers got got accumulated um you know because it, it was for me 
I, I never really cared about the personal accolades. I, I just cared about putting my team in position to win. And, you know, 72 touchdowns means we won a lot of games. <laughs> no doubt. And it was pretty obvious that Drew trusted you almost immediately. You got, Did you sense that you guys had that, that connection right away? Yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those connections that was just, it was built on work. Um, you know, that's that's one of the things that I, I just walking into a situation with with somebody like Drew as a you know for me as a rookie and just seeing the way that he worked and you know him almost immediately setting that bar for what work looked like. Um, I think that's how we connected. I was I was just able to see how he worked and and just tried to fit in and and you know really work at a level that was that was comparable to his and. You know, I think him seeing that in a young player, um, obviously me having an example to follow, you know, our chemistry got built just through through probably thousands and tens of, tens of thousands of reps, you know, so it's, it's really time on task. And, um, you know, when you have somebody that's, that's leading your team, leading your offense um, and can do it by example for a young player, I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that. So, you know, for me, I think a lot of the connection was just, Look, this this man is the ultimate professional. He's going to work his butt off every day. I got to come in and match his intensity, match his work ethic. And I think, you know, it's the old saying that iron sharpens iron. And, you know, I think a lot of our relationship and a lot of our chemistry was just based around our collective ability and want want to be great. And, um, you know, as a result of that, we were able to put up some pretty good numbers. You bet. Uh, visiting with Marcus Colston to be inducted into the Greater New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame, sponsored by the All-State Sugar Bowl. Uh, Drew raves about you to this day. Just goes on and on about uh, unbelievable professional, unbelievable hard worker, humble, uh, strong, dependable, honest. I mean, these are all the kind of words he uses for you all the time. And that's that's nice to know, but it's it's obviously true. And you prided yourself on going out and, and doing your job and your speaking was done on the field and you made yourself an example for others rather than talking loudly. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of it is a product of the way I was raised. You know, my, my parents were very, very similar, just just hardworking, blue-collar um, people that, that cared a lot about their community. And, um, you know, just coming up in a household like that, a lot of that rubbed off on me. And, you know, that's, that's the way I, I approached the game. You know, um, for me, it, it was a job, and there were a lot of people depending on me um, to do that job at a, at a high level, and that was my approach. You know, I'm, I'm coming to work every day. You're going to get the best version of me every day um, through some of the pain, through some of the injuries. Like, n no, no one really cares about what's going on. They care about the end result. And, you know, figuring that out early on, it just it put me in a mode where I was just able to to lock in and, and just understand that yes, this is this is a whole lot of fun. You know, I'm 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 living an opportunity, I'm living a dream, but at the same time, like this is my job, this is my profession. And, you know, in in order to to be here and be here for a long time, I've got to be dependable, I've got to be consistent, and that just means showing up every day. And, you know, I think one of the things that the front office and the coaching staff did a did a hell of a job doing was putting together a roster of people that thought in a similar way. And, you know, I think if you really watch those early years, man, it was a, it was a bunch of blue collar guys out there just going and doing the work and putting in the work on a daily basis and just trusting that the work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday was going to pay off on Sunday. And, um, you know, I, I do take a lot of pride in that just because, it's, it's never really about the end result. It's always about the process. But if you take care of the process, the results take care of themselves. Sean Payton always relied on the best man, not upon the investment or where they were selected. You were obviously a great example of that. Zach Streif was an example of that. Of course, Lance Moore and Pierre Thomas were awesome examples of that. Didn't matter if they were drafted, drafted highly, got paid, whatever. Who was the best was going to play? That's one thing that I think was pretty clear during the Sean Payton regime here. And, and as a player, I mean, you you respect that and you appreciate that because all, all you're ever looking for is an opportunity to show what you can do. And when you have a coaching staff and a front office that 
is going to allow you to showcase that and going to provide the opportunity. Um, it just becomes a matter of stepping up and, and showing what you can do. And to your point, man, the, the, the names, the, 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 the blue collar names that have come through that organization, you know, the Pierre's, the Lances, um, the Chris Ivory's, the Kyrie Robinson's, the, um, I mean, the list goes on and on, man. And, and, you know, I think that's, to me, it's, it's, it's reflective of, of the culture. And as a player, again, all you ever want is an opportunity. All, all you ever want is, is if I put my best foot forward, you're going to respect that and you're going to appreciate that. And, you know, when you do have those opportunities, it, um, I think it, it just, it was very transparent in a way that, it was very easy to earn respect for, for the other guys on the team, right? Earn mm-hmm. respect for and, and earn respect from them because it was all about the work, you know? And, um, again, I, I think, I think the games that we were able to win, the playoff games, the, the Super Bowl, all of those things, I think are a result of that culture to where, look, man, show up and do the work and good things happen for you. Last topic. Our friend sitting out of coaching this year, he's going to be a network television analyst for Fox, and yet all the stories and all the pontifications being made are that he's going to be back in coaching sooner rather than later. Uh, I mean, look, it's a guess at this point. I have spoken to him, but it's just a guess. I'm thinking he's back in coaching probably as early as 2023. I can't imagine Sean Payton with the way he burns and competes isn't coaching again by 23. I wanted to get your thoughts on that and, and how strange it's going to be to see him uh, wearing the colors of another team. Yeah, man, Sean, Sean is, is the ultimate competitor. And, um, you know, what, what I will say is this. There aren't a lot of people that really understand what that grind looks like for one year um, to be in his shoes. Um, you know, and you multiply that by what was he there for 16, 17 years? Um, you know, that's, that, that's a long, that's a long time in any profession, but in this profession, particularly like that's, that's a lifetime. And, you know, I, I think at some point we all need to charge the battery, recharge the battery. And, you know, I think he'll, he'll have an opportunity to, to maybe zoom out, maybe put some focus into some other areas of his life. And, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him back on the sidelines just because I understand how much of a competitor he is, um, how much of a football historian he is. Um, but I could also see him doing really well in the booth. You know, so um, I don't I don't think we're I don't, I don't think we're going to we're going to have to, uh, to to wait very long to figure out what this next move. Is. But um, he's going to be somewhere around the, that that much. I can almost guarantee <laughs> right there with you, the. All-State Sugar Bowl, Greater New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame. The event is July 30th in the evening in Caesar Superdome. And, of course, one of our Hall of Fame inductees, Marcus Colston. Surely looking forward to that. Marcus, again, congratulations. I don't know. Maybe I'll be calling you next year about another Hall of Fame. I don't know. But <laughs> if that's the case, I, I couldn't be happier for you. You're a class act, a good man, and one heck of a player. Congratulations. Look forward to seeing you. Uh, thank you, Ken. I really appreciate it, man.